Hello guys, Kim Schuster here. A lot of you guys enjoyed the God Slayer build and for that I am very grateful. So I decided to make a step-by-step -step guide that will take you from the very beginning of the game and show you where to go and what items to collect to become a God Slayer. Although this is targeted at players that want to play the God Slayer build, this is still a strong early game start and you can just use the information in this video for your next new game adventure. For those of you who haven't seen the God Slayer build, I will leave a link for you in the description. Very strong and extremely fun build to play. And I promise if you follow this guide, you will end up with something that you will enjoy very much for the rest of your adventure. So without any further delay, let's jump right in. For the starter class, you can either do this as a Vagabond or a Confessor. I'm choosing the Vagabond because it has the best attributes spread. Make sure to pick the golden seed as your keepsake. This will give you access to one extra flask from the start of the game. First thing, make it to the Church of Allah, then head to the gate front, talk to Melna, and get your horse. After that, grab the map fragment and go down the basement in the camp and get the whetstone knife, so you can add new skills and affinities to your weapon. Go back immediately to the Church of Ella and talk to Rani to get your summoning bell and your first summoning spell. Head to this location over here on the map and grab the Strength Knot Crystal Tear and then head east and obtain the Lance Weapon on top of the big square structure. A very strong early game weapon that we will use for a while. Teleport back to the gate front and ride until you reach the Bridge of Sacrifice Grace location over here on the map. Head west to this location and obtain the Face Knot Crystal Tear. After that, go up the hill until you reach the Church of Pilgrimage. Obtain the Sacred Tear and teleport back to the Bridge of Sacrifice Grace location. This time, head south until you reach the destroyed caravan. Loot the Morning Star Mace and continue your way south until you reach Castle Morn Rambert Grace location and obtain the map fragment down the road. Use the air vent close to the Grace location. Interact with the statue and remove the three wise beasts to gain access to the tower. Make your way to the top and open the chest to obtain the memory stone. Make your way to the third church of Marke over here on the map and grab the flask of wondrous physic and the items around, then proceed south to reach Fort Height. Grab the golden seed and go inside the tower to climb the ladder to reach the chest at the top of the tower to obtain the left half of the Dectus medallion. After that, teleport back to the church of Marke and go behind it and use the hidden portal to teleport in front of the bestial sanctum. Might as well open the door and unlock the grace location. After that, ride south and grab the golden seed on the way. Continue your way until you reach the bridge with the dragon guarding it. Instead of crossing the bridge, go around and reach Lena's Rise. Use the air vent and land on the balcony. Take the elevator to the top and obtain the memory stone located there. Make your way to Fort Faro's Grace location over here. Melina will appear and offers to take you to the Round Table Hold. Explore the Round Table Hold and teleport back to Fort Faro's Sites of Grace. Enter the fort and obtain the right half of the Dectus Medallion and Radagon's Sword Seal Talisman. After that, equip the Morning Star Mace and start spanking the big dragon near the fort. As soon as he gets below 80%, mount up if you are not already and keep hitting him. When he dies and sees his body twitch, rush to the grace location and rest quickly. 
you will be awarded exactly 50,000 runes for each attempt if done correctly. I did this a total of 4 times and accumulated 200,000 runes. That is enough to get us to level 45. Invest until you reach 20 Vigor, 18 Mind, 13 Endurance, 15 Strength, 17 Dexterity, and 25 Faith. You can keep doing this as many times as you like or whenever you need a quick 50,000 runes for upgrades or leveling. Go to Fort Gale North over here on the map. Very close to that grace location, there is an invisible teardrop scarab that is holding the flame of the Redman's Ash of War. Defeat the scarab and obtain the Ash of War. After that, we are going up the hill and around the fort to obtain flame grant me strength incantation. Now, make your way around the Stoneville Castle to reach Lorania of the Lakes region. The first item to grab is the Two Fingers Heirloom Talisman from the Purified Ruins. After that, I used the air vent nearby and made my way to the Church of Vows and unlocked the great location there. This will save you some time later, so I suggest you do that right now. Head to the converted tower and climb to the top using the crumbling wall to obtain another memory stone. Equip Flame of the Red Mains as a 4 to the Lance, use the Face and Strength tears in the Flask of Wondrous Physic, and head to the Lakeside Crystal Cave over here on the map. There are plenty of Smithing Stones 2 and 3, as well as Somber Smithing Stones, so explore the whole mine if possible. However, what we want is to defeat the mini boss at the end and obtain the smithing stone miner's bell bearing one. This will allow us to buy unlimited smithing stones one and two. After defeating the crystal boss, teleport outside and use the air vent close by and unlock the east Raya Lucaria gate grace location. From there, Head to the Grand Lift of Dectus and use it to reach the Altus Plateau region. First, I obtained the Smithing Stone Miner's Bell Bearing 2 from the sealed tunnel over here on the map. You don't even need to clear the entire tunnel, the item is in a chest very close to the entrance of the mine. Now, make your way to the first spanning Great Bridge and use the board up there to teleport to the other side of the broken bridge. There is a grace location right there, under the bridge, after you teleport. From there, you should make your way to the Corpse Ten Shack to obtain the Golden Vow Incantation. I didn't bother fighting anything there, just grabbed the spell and ran back to the grace location. Teleport to the round table hold and offer the bell bearing to the twin maiden husks. Start buying 12 of each smithing stone to upgrade the lance to plus 12. But make sure to check how many stones you are already holding so you don't overbuy. I also bought the finger seal so I am able to cast both golden vow and flame grant mysteries. The twin maiden also sells a memory stone for 3k runes so make sure to buy that later. After that, I went back to Kirid and defeated the Air 3 avatar over here on the map to obtain the flame shrouding crack tier. Replace the flame shrouding crack tier with the strength tier inside the flask of Thunder's Physic. Make your way to the Windmill Village and defeat the Noble there to obtain the Godskin Pillar and the Scouring Black Flame Incantation. The way I did it is by using the Wolf Summons to distract him, while using the Flame of the Red Mains to break his sense and critical attack him over and over. I decided to go back and smack the Big Dragon for another 50,000 runes because I wanted to upgrade the Godskin Pillar to plus 12. The next step is optional and it is for those of you who are looking for an extremely rewarding challenge. 
and that is obtaining the Goddess Slayer's Great Sword from the Divine Tower of Kaelid. I will quickly show you how to get inside the tower. Be very careful because you can easily fall down during your attempt to get inside, but once you reach the basement, activate the Great Location. You will encounter a black flame monk that is guarding the door to the boss room. You can farm that monk for the black flame monk set. However, I cannot stress how much I love this armor set and how much I hate this farm. I spent over 2 hours grinding the set. One trick is to ignore him for now until you defeat the Godskin Apostle. Then every time you engage him, you can go inside the boss room and he cannot follow you. As for the boss fight, it is an extremely difficult fight, but you can do it before level 50. I didn't use any summons, just simply kept my distance, dodged the black flame bolts and used flame of the red mains to break his stance, and then delivered a critical strike over and over. Difficult fight, but the prize is waiting for you in the next room after you defeat him. Having the God Slayer's great sword this early in the game is extremely powerful and very much rewarding. We are pretty much done at this point. I went and destroyed Margaret the Fell Omen and equipped the Two Fingers Heirloom Talisman. Made my way inside the Stormvale Castle and obtained the God Slayer's Seal and the Godskin Prayer Book. Went to Mariel Passer Vows at the Church of Vows and learned the Black Flame Incantation and upgraded the Gullslayer Seal to plus 12. I'm sorry if this guide was too long for you guys, but I guarantee you will very much enjoy your journey from this point forward as a God's Slayer. If you found this useful, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And let me know if you are interested in a similar guide for some of my other builds. Or simply tell me what bit would you like to see next on my channel. Thanks so much for watching guys and have a great day.